Hello! This video is inspired by Joy Cho of Oh Joy. I knew about Joy from her awesome blog, and she's also on YouTube where she makes fun and inspiring videos. If you haven't already, definitely subscribe to her channel. She's also having a baby, and a group of us in the Kin community have come together to throw her a digital baby shower. Each one of us is making our own video for the shower, so keep watching to see all the fun ideas in this playlist. For this DIY, I love Joy's sense of design, and I remember seeing her blog post about the book she had printed with pictures of her first baby. With so many photos being taken on our phones and everything being on our computers, I'm a big fan of digital printed books, and I'm going to show you how to make this photo album. Since we share so many of our photos on social sites, I was also inspired by Instagram. I know if I had kids, I would have a lot of Instagram photos, so I designed this around these 4x4 inch printed Instagram photos. I decided to make the pages long so that there's enough room to include a little note next to the photo. I also included a painted heart on the cover, which is similar to the icon that we all tap when we like a photo. I want you guys to feel free to use this idea for your own album. This is for a baby shower, but it can be used for any occasion. You can adjust the sizes and the printing methods to suit your own photos. To start with the pages, I'm using 12 by 12 inch cardstock paper in a variety of colors. I'm going to start with seven sheets, and the nice thing about this binding is that you can always add more pages later. Then trimming them in half to a size of 10 and a quarter inch by six inches. Now I have 14 sheets. Use one of the sheets as a template to trace onto your board to make two hard covers. If you want some ideas on where you can find board for bookbinding, check out this video here and I will also link it in the description below. Then two more pieces that measure out to one and a quarter inch by six inches. These will be for the spine. Then trim out all the pieces. To recap, I have 14 sheets that are 10 and a quarter inch by six inches then two board pieces that also measure out 10 and a quarter by six inches, and two more board pieces that are one and a quarter inch by six inches. For the inside covers, I'm using two pieces of felt that are nine by 12 inches. Starting with one cover, apply the glue to the outside edges and press the felt onto the board. If you're using a hot glue gun, apply the glue one side at a time and try to make an even thin line of glue or else if you put a lot of glue at once and press the felt down, it comes through the felt and makes it darker. Now we're going to glue that smaller piece on the rest of the felt onto the opposite side so that it bends like this and that's how the cover will open. To determine the distance between that small piece and the cover, you want to measure the thickness of two boards. In my case, it's about five millimeters. So I'm going to fill where the end of the board is and mark that distance away from it. Then glue that smaller board piece to the cover in the same way that I did the other piece, one side at a time. Then trim off the excess felt. And repeat those steps to make the second cover. Now on one cover, measure one inch from the top and bottom centered on the spine section, and this will be for the binding holes. To make the holes, I'm using this Japanese screw punch. This is a really easy way to make clean cut holes and I really like using the screw punch versus an awl or something else to pierce the holes. If you want to learn more about this tool, you can check out this video right here and you can find the link in the description below. Then line up both covers and use that one that you already punched as a template to make the measurements for the other cover. And just repeat the same steps, punching the holes on that one. Then we're going to punch holes on the pages. Starting with one page, line it up with the cover, and use that as a template again to measure out the holes. And punch those out. Now you can use that page as a template to punch through multiple sheets at a time. Now that everything is punched, we can start binding this album. To bind the pages, I'm going to use this thin ribbon, but you can also use other types of thread. On one cover, thread the top and bottom like this. Fold the flap down and start threading on the pages. After all the pages are on, thread on the other cover. Then tie a knot or a bow on both the top and bottom pieces. 
If you plan on replacing these pages or adding more, I recommend tying a bow so that you can untie it. But if you want it to be secure, you can actually tie a knot on top of the bow, which you can still undo. Then trim off the excess ribbon or thread. A little tip, if you want the pages to fold over easier, you can score them with a bone folder to make a crease. Then I added a little heart on the cover with acrylic paint. To print my digital photos, I used a company called Social Print Studio and I really like how they came out. If you want to do the same or learn more about their service, you can check out the link below. I don't have any pictures of cute babies, but I do have the next best thing, so I'm just using my own Instagram photos to give you an idea of what they could look like in this album. And I'm just using these adhesive dots to glue the photos onto the pages. This really is a sweet and modern version of a scrapbook. And I just like how you can customize these pages to be as simple or as colorful as you want. Congrats to Joy on her next baby, and I hope you guys enjoyed this DIY album. Don't forget to check out the rest of the videos on this playlist, and you can also find the links in the video description below. While you're down there, leave a comment if you're also a big fan of Joy Cho, and let me know what you think about the photo album.